So I am extremely excited about the MacBook Pro 2021 14 inch. But in this video, I want to talk about why I personally got the base model and why I think this base model is actually an incredible value. So if that sounds spicy, please smash that like button and subscribe down below and let's get right into it. How's it going everybody? It is Ben Aqua. Welcome to the hashtag Aqua fam. I've been getting these comments like, why did you get the base model? What is wrong with you? You're poor, like wh what? I'm getting all these like weird comments and I thought I would just kind of clarify maybe with a little more detail and introspection as to why I personally went for this particular MacBook Pro 14 inch base model. The first reason why I think base models are amazing is of course the price. The 14 inch base model is $1,999, which is by no means a cheap laptop. And I said this in my previous video, that is the most expensive laptop I personally have ever bought. And why I didn't get extra RAM or extra cores or any of that kind of stuff, I just got the base model of the 14 inch is because I really don't feel like I even need that much power to do the things that I do because like this MacBook Air M1 right here handles video editing with 16 gigabytes, one terabyte, you know, it's a little bit souped up, but it handles video editing super well. It handles music production really well, even though the DAW that I use, Ableton Live, isn't optimized for M1 yet. Check out my music on Spotify and Apple Music. Search for Ben Aqua. I highly appreciate all your streams and support. And yeah, after using this MacBook Air and the Mac Mini M1 with 16 gigabytes as well, especially if you're gonna be doing video editing and that kind of thing, something that's more kind of graphics intensive and more processor intensive, I would definitely recommend getting the 16 gigabyte models of your M1 machine. And what's cool about the M1 MacBook Pro 2021, the 14 and 16, inch is the base model comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and you also get 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. You also get an eight core CPU, a 14 core GPU, 16 core neural engine, the liquid retina XDR display, three Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI, SD card slot, MagSafe 3 port, Magic Keyboard Force Touch. This base model is not just your average base model. Like the $2,000 14 inch MacBook Pro is actually a beefed up model. So I didn't really see much point when I was pre-ordering like, should I upgrade the RAM or upgrade this and that? Or maybe even go for the M1 Max chip, which would be even crazier. A big part of me is like, if Apple's going to make all these claims about the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips that they're 82.5% faster or whatever, you know, like all these little stats that they tell us, like a part of me is just pure fascination. I want to see how far I can go with just the base model. To test Apple a little bit too, to be like, how do these claims actually hold up in real world usage? I also did a poll recently on my YouTube community tab where I ask y'all, are you going to upgrade to these new MacBook Pros if you already have the M1? And a majority of y'all were actually going to stay with your M1 machine because you thought it was fast enough for you. And I'm like 99% certain that the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro is going to have way more power than I even need, even for video editing, like I can handle several streams of 4K footage on this MacBook Air M1. The same thing goes for the Mac Mini M1. And with the 14 inch MacBook Pro coming in with its 16 gigabytes of RAM and even more cores, even better processor, like I have no doubt that I just need the base model to get a lot of the things that I personally need to get done. So I'm not saying that the base model is going to be for everybody because some people, you know, if you're editing a bunch of 8K streams, you might want to get a little more RAM, you know, just a little more extra juice, maybe the M1 Max chip, but that's really going to set you back a lot more in terms of price alone. Like each time you add something, you're adding $200 here, $300 there. The top of the line MacBook Pro 16 inch comes out to like almost $7,000. And for me, that's just completely overkill. Like if you love that machine, that's amazing. You know, you be you, I'm gonna be me. Like if that's the setup that you personally need because you need that kind of power, you know, go all out. I think it's awesome. You know, if you have that kind of budget, go for it. But if you're on a smaller budget and an even kind of mid-range budget, because $2,000, like I said, is not cheap. The base model 14 inch for me, I think is plenty of machine. I can't really foresee a lot of situations where I would even need, you know, a bunch of extra cores for this or for that, especially when the chip is supposed to be super efficient and all that kind of stuff. Like how far can these chips and these new machines really go just at the base model? That's really what it comes down to for me. And I'm just speculating here. I haven't gotten the machine. I'm getting it tomorrow, but I might be completely wrong. Maybe I did need a more souped up version of this MacBook Pro. And in my previous video where I was discussing the same kind of stuff, I did get a lot of comments that 
that were like, yes, I'm getting the base model of the MacBook Pro 14 inch as well. I wanna see how well it does. So I know there's a lot of y'all out there that are really curious about these base models and think that the base model is probably enough for you. So I may end up just keeping my MacBook Air M1 and my Mac Mini. Like these devices might just be enough for my personal needs. But again, it's not gonna be the same for every single person. Obviously for me, I'm down with the base model. We shall see if it's actually amazing or not. So let me know in the comments below if you picked up a base model of this new MacBook Pro or if you're still team MacBook Pro M1, MacBook Air M1, Mac Mini, iMac, etc. But yeah, anyway, that's just some of my kind of raw thoughts about why I personally get the base model. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful for you, please smash the like button and subscribe below. And be sure to also subscribe because I'm going to be doing more content comparing the MacBook Pro against the MacBook Air M1 and maybe the Mac Mini. So I will see you in those videos. I really appreciate you spending this time with me. Also add me on Twitter and Instagram at B3NAQUA. That's it for this video. I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.